Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. President Nicolas Maduro claims to have won Venezuela's presidential election. That's according to partial results announced by the Electoral Council. Al 80%. The head of the National Electoral Council, who is a close ally of Mr. Maduro, said that with 80% of ballots counted, Mr. Maduro had 51% of the vote, compared to 44% for his main rival. The Venezuelan opposition, however, dismissed the CNE's announcement as fraudulent and promised to challenge the result. It said its candidate, Edmundo Gonzalez, had won with 70% of the votes and insisted he was the rightful president-elect. Opposition parties had united behind Mr. Gonzalez in an attempt to unseat President Maduro after 11 years in power. Opinion polls conducted ahead of the election had suggested Mr. Gonzalez would roundly defeat the current president. State media is reporting record-breaking rain has left thousands of people stranded by floods in North Korea over the weekend, prompting leader Kim Jong-un to declare an emergency. Photographs show submerged farmland and homes after heavy rain hit Sinuiju City and Yuji County, which border China, according to the Rondong Sinmun. State media said many were later rescued by airlift. Such natural disasters are likely to compound existing issues like food scarcity and poor infrastructure in North Korea. A far-left activist in France has been arrested in connection with a series of attacks on the country's high-speed train network, which caused travel chaos ahead of the Paris Olympics opening ceremony. France's interior minister confirmed media reports of an arrest being made on Sunday in Sienne Maritime in Normandy. It comes as French reports said telecom installations had been vandalized, affecting mainly fixed-line services. The reports said cables in electrical cabinets had been cut in southern France and that installations in the Mio region near Luxembourg and the Ois area near Paris had been targeted. Families of landslide victims in the Ethiopian region of Gopha are continuing to mourn as search operations continue for people buried under the mud. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs said the death toll is expected to rise to at least 500 people. At least 257 people died last week when heavy rains triggered a landslide, burying people in the Gopher zone of southern Ethiopia and a second one engulfing those engaged in rescue efforts. Local media is reporting that South Africa's former president, Jacob Zuma, has been expelled from the African National Congress, the party he once led after campaigning for a rival party in the May general election. The ANC's disciplinary committee found him guilty of prejudicing the integrity of the party and has given him three weeks to appeal against the ruling. Fishermen in Bulacan, a province north of the Philippines' capital, say they are worried they will lose their livelihoods after an oil spill from a capsized vessel washed up close to their shores. MT Terra Nova, a marine tanker carrying one and a half million liters of industrial fuel, sank on Thursday in rough seas off the coast of Lime in the province of Batan, leaving one crew member dead. Officials were investigating whether the sinking is related to Typhoon Gamey, which on Wednesday flooded swathes of the capital Manila and surrounding towns. And thousands of tourists have braved extreme heats to cheer on divers plunging from the old bridge in Bosnia's city of Mostar to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the reconstruction of the landmark destroyed in war. Me, me. The 16th century bridge, a marvel of Ottoman era architecture, where people have met for centuries, was destroyed by Bosnian Croat artillery in 1993 in the Bosnian War. In 2004, it was rebuilt in an effort led by the World Bank and UNESCO as the symbol of reconciliation and unification of the ethnically divided town. Thirty-eight athletes from Bosnia and abroad took part in the contest, diving 80 feet from the bridge's high arch into the cold waters of the Neretva River below. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos.